All right. After that famous 12 and 1 campaign wrapped up in 2014, uh, TCU has wrapped it also up for the spring in 2015. We bring in Melissa Trewasser from Frogs of War to, to help us get a handle on the Horned Frogs for this fall. Melissa, thanks so much for joining us. And thanks for having me. before we talk actual football, hey, we got to talk uh, unis because that's probably the biggest story here is actually what these guys look like on the field because uh, that caused kind of a stir, right? It was a pretty big uh, deal nationally. Um, they revealed the new uniforms after the game Friday night, last Friday night, and uh, there were mixed emotions to say the least, uh, not only locally but nationally as well. Um, it's a new uniform. It's the first time it's ever been done. Nike created these. They've obviously been in the test lab with them. They're called mock speed uniforms, and they have a sublimated frog skin pattern. So up close, look a little bit camo-ish. We are in Texas, so whatever. Um, from a distance, it you can kind of get that frog skin-like texture. So the the adults, as, as grown-ups, were iffy on them, it seems. The kids loved them. The recruits loved them. That's all that really matters, right? <laughs> recruits, that's the key word right there, recruits. What do the recruits think? That's all that matters. And that was a very detailed description, Melissa, but... Yeah, you, you kind of lost me. I, I don't know those uh, clothing fashion terms, so I'm basically going to have to wait and actually see them to, to see what I think of them. But very detailed yeah. description that, that most people yeah. out there will get. Yeah, they're, they're nice. When you see them mixed up, a couple of, I saw a couple of things on Twitter where they, they cross the, the white and the purple, and those look cool. And they had an all purple and all white, and they had an all gray, and their gray is just no no one seems to be a fan of that. But the purple and white mixed together looks pretty sweet. Helmets were, were really nice. You, so you we'll see. Tell me that there's an all black. There has to be no. an all black, right? No? Nope. No, all black. And the biggest thing that is something to watch for a Gary Patterson is incredibly superstitious. Uh, we have played our best with a frog on the helmet. They did not show a helmet Friday night that had a frog on it. So I'd be willing to bet that has changed before uh, real football starts getting played here yeah. in a couple months. I like the black with the purple. Yeah. Oh, I think I, that looks good. Helmets, yeah. yeah, we'll see. They said they're not going to use them every game. They're going to be mix and match. They're just more pieces to add to the wardrobe. We have almost as many combinations now as Oregon, it seems. So I'm sure they'll get it right when the games matter. Good stuff. All right, we're going to talk some football. Quarterback, Perfect. Javon Boykin, he's in place. He's good. He practices, and then the spring game, he watches from the sideline because other guys need more work than he does. So can you set up the quarterback battle? for the backup job and what you saw last Friday? Well, you know, Boykin uh, had successful wrist surgery on his left wrist. He came through that. Everything seems to be on track for him to be back to 100% sooner rather than later. He should have no problem with, with working out this summer and with playing this uh, in the fall. Um, but developing a backup for him, you know, a guy that, that is – running and is out of the pocket a lot obviously that's almost as important as the starter so we've got three guys kind of in the mix uh, there's Bram Kohlhausen who's a transfer from Houston and we've got the two red shirt freshmen Foster Sawyer who is from All Saints which is local in Fort Worth and then Grayson Muelstein who's also a Texas kid uh, Grayson is is quick Patterson said that he's quick he's fast Still working on his decision-making, but he can make all the throws. He's got the good arm. Uh, Bram Kohlhausen's most experienced guy. I want to say he had four to six starts at Houston, and he was kind of the mop-up guy last year. So he actually did get quite a bit of playing time, but didn't throw a lot of passes. And then Foster's kind of the wild card. Um, Patterson says that he's quicker than you think he's going to be, which is about as good a compliment as you're going to get on a freshman out of, out of Patterson in the spring. Um, but he's got pretty decent feet. He has a cannon for an arm. This is a kid I, I watched play in high school, and, and he can sling it. So the question for him is going to be the decision-making, going to be his ability to execute the, hot, the offense when it's running at full speed. But he got the first look on Friday night, and he had a couple really nice passes, uh, hit a couple of long balls. He really is the one that I would say coming out of the spring has the inside track on that backup position. I know it's old news for the rest of you down there in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth, but for the rest of us, and we talked about it last time, it was stunning to watch this offense operate last year compared to previous seasons. So they were the breakthrough offense in college football, and Trevon Boykin went from a guy that we thought should possibly be a wide receiver, filling quarterback to star quarterback, and everything just took off. So to make sure that that's maintained, 
uh, look at the offense and, and where you think they are and, and where those question marks need to be answered? Well, you know, the best thing we have going for us right now outside of Boykin, of course, is the offensive line. Uh, Joey Hunt is maybe just a tad undersized, but Patterson says he's one of the smartest, headiest kids that he's ever coached, and it's almost impossible to fool him. Uh, he is a rock in the middle. He should be a Remington Award candidate um, all season long. Uh, we're returning a ton of depth. We're only replacing one guy on the offensive line, and while that guy looks like he's going to be an NFL draft pick, it still brings back a ton of support up front. Uh, the running game is probably the biggest unknown right now. Um, Aaron Green comes back. He was lights out through the last several games of the season once B.J. Catalan got hurt. Uh, but with Catalan going to the draft and looking like he has a chance to be picked, who's going to be that guy that steps in? Um, you've got two guys that got significant game experience last year, um, two freshmen, Travoris Johnson, who is a tank. I mean, that guy is goal line written all over him. And then uh, Kyle Hicks, who showed some flashes of brilliance but didn't seem to quite put it all together. Uh, there's a wild card, uh, Sean Nixon, who was lost in fall ball uh, to, I think, an ACL injury, who's back. And it's, Patterson says he looks great. If he can show that he can consistently catch the ball out of the, out, the backfield and then also be able to make some cuts and make some guys miss in the open field, he could be the guy that ends up spelling green. But I think we'll see what we haven't seen in the last several years, and it's a, a running back that takes the bulk of the carries in Aaron Green as opposed to the running back by committee that TCU's kind of been for the last five to ten years, really. Melissa Treewasser joins us from uh, Frogs of War on SB Nation uh, talking some TCU football with us, so we switched to the defense. We talked about it last time we had you on, Melissa. You set us up nicely with uh, the secondary being the big concern with all that leadership, all that talent going uh, moving on some to the NFL. Um, anything to quiet your, your concerns that happened uh, from the reports in spring practice? And if you can just give us an overall feel for the defense at this point. You know, the defense is an unknown. Um, we've been hearing a lot all spring about how the offense is so far ahead of the defense that the defensive guys have got to pick things up quickly. And the minute when Patterson and company feel like the defense is playing with the offense will be when we go, oh, man, we have a chance to be really special this year again. Uh, linebacker, right now, it's two freshmen leading the depth chart, but I'll be honest, that seems to have changed every two or three days. We're expecting an updated depth chart this week. It hasn't been published yet that I've seen, um, but I'll be surprised if we don't see at least one freshman at the top of it. Uh, what we're getting into now is the the juggling of positions. You know, we've moved a couple guys from wide receiver to corner and a couple guys from safety to linebacker, linebacker to safety. So there's a lot of unanswered questions still. Uh, the guy to watch is early enrollee uh, Mike Freeze, a freshman linebacker, and another early enrollee freshman, Alex Dunham. I would venture to say that one or both of those guys has a chance to start on game one against Minnesota, and that is a tall task for any freshman. And the back end, the Cameron Eccles looper experiment seems to have kind of hit a stalling point. You know, he was our punt returner, kick returner, and a wide receiver last year who Patterson has moved to the defensive side of the ball. He is also a track star. This is the reigning Big 12 long jump champion as well. Uh, so his, he hasn't quite gotten the time he needs defensively. He's been nicked up a little bit, and there's been so many injuries um, at wide receiver on offense. He's kind of had to stick to that side of the ball. But he's a guy, 6'2", fast as lightning, could really be a dynamic playmaker in the back end for TCU. It's just going to be, will he get enough reps in the fall to be able to make that transition seamlessly? Melissa Treewasser from uh, SB Nation's Frogs of War, talking some TCU football, putting a cap on spring practice for us. Uh, hopefully we can track you down, Melissa, sometime in the summer. We can talk scheduling. We can talk August camp and how things are working out at that point. Yeah, we'll look forward to it.